But there's a dark fan theory out there that the Inspector Gadget we're following is really a robot that believes he's the original. Hey spooky siblings, welcome to Wicked Wednesday, Spooktober edition. My name is Red and this is Left on Red. Since it is Spooktober, our favorite month, Polti and I are trying something different and counting down top 5 darkest, most disturbing fan theories. Number 5. Richie Rich's parents ran into massive financial struggles and to preserve their lifestyle, they killed poor little Richie and collected his life insurance. He became Casper the Friendly Ghost, which is why they look so similar. Well, I can confirm this one. Casper is a dear friend and he gave me permission to share this. For the longest time, he was in denial and made up the whole backstory of ghost parents. But things are looking up now. My man owns like dozens of casinos in Ghost Vegas. Number four, Inspector Gadget. We all assume that Penny's uncle is like Robocop, injured as a police officer and equipped with new cybernetic limbs with cool new gadgets provided to him by the police department and Chief Quimby, which allows him to fight the supervillain Dr. Claw. But there's a dark fan theory out there that the Inspector Gadget we're following is really a robot that believes he's the original. The chief is on on this conspiracy to hide the truth from the public and from his niece. Penny's real uncle was horribly disfigured and left with a permanently low, raspy voice. He's angry that this robot has taken his place and taken his life. So he has vowed to destroy this new Inspector Gadget. Dr. Claw is the original Inspector Gadget. Number 3. We all know Edna Mode from The Incredibles and her iconic line, No Capes. The anger she shows when someone mentions them might be due to past trauma. Think about it. You're the most renowned superhero costume designer and you keep seeing the news covering the deaths of superheroes which were caused by the very capes you added to their costumes. Imagine her going to each of their funerals, probably blaming herself for, indirectly and unwillingly of course, causing her clients premature death especially Stratogales, who, according to the actual movie canon, was a teenager when she got sucked into the jet turbine. And yet, I have a sneaking suspicion that she gave just one more person a cape after all of that. Syndrome. He must have known who Edna Mode was, considering his obsession with being a superhero and Mr. Incredible. She would be his top choice for a suit maker due to said obsession. And she, being her iconic discerning self, probably knew that Syndrome was no hero and that he'd have to be stopped. So she gave the heroes a little help, indirectly and willingly, by giving Syndrome a cape. Sneaky, iconic Edna. I stand. Number two. Bikini Bottom, home to SpongeBob SquarePants, is a real place. It is the bottom of Bikini Atoll, where the U.S. tested nuclear weapons. 
The characters in the show are sea creatures mutated by nuclear radiation. Not just the sea creatures. I mean, look at Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. And now, spooky siblings, get ready for number one. Oh, oh, can I share one, please? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, I've got a good one here. Pokemon destroyed the world. Now, hear me out. Okay, in the near future, genetics has advanced to the point where designer pets are possible. So people start having miniature elephants and giraffes alongside dogs and cats. This fad lasts decades, but eventually people tire of the same old, same old. So a company creates artificial pets, genetic creations with combinations of different animals. Designer pets are all the rage. These designer pets are custom engineered, able to be fully digitized and stored in the cloud. And that's where the problem arises. The first few versions of pocket monsters are harmless, cute, and cuddly, and no issue arises. Decades later, mutations begin to appear. The genetic resequencing used by the designers use an experimental radiation, and that radiation is now supercharging the pets. They actually begin exploding from the internal power imbalance. Soon enough, the power shift alters the Pokemon's behaviors, changing them from cuddly pets to berserk atom bombs. Over the next few decades, they destroy the world. Humans are on the brink of extinction with isolated pockets of survivors barely managing to hold on. Centuries pass, with this new dynamic the new normal. Eventually, a method of control is discovered. It is learned that the power within Pokemon can be released in controlled fashion to lessen the chance of rage. A new routine is started, where the youth of a village would be called on to periodically drain the power levels of surrounding Pokemon. This kept the village safe and over time creates bond between Pokemon and humanity. This is the world Ash is born into, a world that has long ago forgotten the truth behind Pokemon. Long ago accepted them as being a natural part of their world. A world that only exists because the youth are tasked with the responsibility of training Pokemon to be used in draining other Pokemon's power levels. <laughs> and that was Top 5 Darkest Fan Theories on Wicked Wednesday. Stay tuned for more Spooktober specials. My name is Red. And this is Left on Red. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And press the bell notification button so that you get notified every time Polti and I upload a new video. Until next time.